We've begun with this. Um, there's my favorite quadratic of all time, okay? And the first thing I'll ask you to do is pretty pedestrian. Just the factorization, that's all I'm after. So can someone give me a heads up who's already got the factorization there written down? Yes, go ahead. Um, x plus 3. Yep. And then x minus 3. Okay, now, x plus, three, x plus 3 and x plus 2 will do it for me. Now, by the way, how do we know? You've got two choices, right? Number one, you can just expand back. Like, I can expand the brackets and I'll get x squared plus 5x plus 6. It'll work. Alternatively, like, what are these numbers 2 and 3? How do we select them? The add to they six add to five. add to five, right? Add to five, and they multiply to six. Okay, good. Good morning. All right, now that's fine. I just want you to keep that in your back of your mind. Let's have a look at B. Now you have to do two things. First, you have to evaluate, right? So you see this function notation before. It means you're going to take x plus two and set it, substitute it everywhere you saw x. Right. So this is a fairly straightforward substitution. Let's just give it a go. So here's B f of x plus 2. Now this first line before I do any expanding, I'm literally just going to write down the substitution. So everywhere I see an x, there's an x plus 2, and there's another x plus 2. You happy with that? There's nothing too dramatic that's happened there. In order to get to this part, the sorry, this part, the factorization, I've got to expand this first, and then I'll get something which looks a bit like this, right? It'll be in general form, and then I can repeat this process, right? Think of my pair of numbers. So let's just quickly go ahead and do that. x plus 2 all squared. What's the expansion of that? x squared plus 4x plus 4. Here there's a pretty simple expansion as well. 5x plus 10 plus 6. So far so good? Yeah. Okay. So let's have a look. Let's tidy this thing up. Um, what like terms have I got? How many x squared terms do I have in the whole thing? I just have the one, so I don't have to worry about him. I've got an x term there and an x term there, so they're going to come together. And then you've got a whole bunch of constant terms flying around. One, uh, two, three. Have I counted them all up? Does that look good? Okay, so let's, uh, let's collect them. Uh, as we said, there's just that x squared term. 4x plus 5x. 9x. 4 plus 10 plus 6. That's 20. And now I'm ready to factorize, right? What's the pair of numbers I'm after? Five and four. Five and four, that'll do it for me. So, x plus four, x plus five. Okay, excellent. Good. Keep that in the back of my mind, and let's just quickly do C. The process is exactly the same. So let's see if we can do this a little bit quicker. f of x minus two, because I'm familiar with this same function, I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go to this line, right? What's the same and what's different? Well, the front, I'm going to have x minus 2 all squared. x minus 2 all squared. So that's almost like this, right? The only difference is you're going to get a minus 4x in the middle. You okay with that? That's my x minus 2 all squared. Then I'm going to add 5 lots of x minus 2 this time, rather than x plus 2. Okay. So that's going to give me 5x minus 10. Right? There's that minus 2, which has become a minus 10 instead of a plus 10. And then you've got this plus 6 still hanging on the end. Yep, does that look alright? Should we collect like terms? How many x squared terms do I have? One. Just the x squared, so I'll just write down here. <coughs> minus 4x plus 5x. Minus 4 x. plus 5. That leaves me with a single x. And what happens to my constants? Cancel out. Yeah, I get the, the 4 and the 6 are a 10. You always look for a... Did you guys learn? We, are you old or young enough to have learned friends of 10? Friends of 10. Anyway, whenever you're adding up a whole bunch of um, numbers, right? It's like, oh, I've got seven numbers to add up. You think of the ones that add up to 10 first because they're easy to do because our brains are pretty good at that. So things that my primary school daughter has taught me. So 4 plus 6 is 10, takes away 10, and then you're done, right? So, so in fact, I'm already finished, okay? Ready to factorize. What's my factorization? You just take out a factor of x for this one, right? And that leaves you with x plus 1. Okay, so far so good. Now, this is our backdrop here, right? Um, I want, I'm going to use these three results. <coughs> Excuse me. And what I'm really interested in is not just for this particular example of f of x, right? This particular function. What if I had any function you like? You know loads of functions, right? For instance, I could have said, how about this? That's another function, the square root of x. Or how about this guy? 2 to the power of x, right? Or 3 to the power of x. Or 
any other kind of uh, <coughs> excuse me thing that you know how to graph, right? For any of these, what happens when I do this, right? Just put in like a plus two there or a minus two. What's actually taking place? What effect does that have on this um, on these resultant functions and these resultant graphs? Okay. Now the result I'm going to show you is kind of counterintuitive, um, and by counterintuitive, like what I mean is. It's the opposite of what you might expect. Uh, your intuition says, oh, I think it should do this. But the truth is, it ends up doing exactly the opposite. So I'm going to try and convince you a very counterintuitive thing, and I'm going to do it three ways, okay? Three ways so that hopefully one of them, at least one of them will convince you, okay? Because um, all the way, even to year 11 and 12, students find this confusing. So that's why I'm going to try and give you a lot of, um, a lot of evidence, right? 